Today's concept is Fraunhofer diffraction at double slit. The bending of light waves due to the corners at the edges is nothing but diffraction. Fraunhofer diffraction means the source and the screen are placed at infinite distances. Due to that one, we have to use the lens. Here, the wave front is traveling very long distances. That's why it will convert it into the plane wave front. Today's our concept is Fraunhofer diffraction at double slit. That means here we have to take two slits. The width of the each slit is same. That is a centimeters or uh, millimeters. Okay. Now let us consider a source. S is a source of light, as we know that. It emits the wavelets like this. These are all the, the wavelets. Okay. Now, we have to take a lens. This is the lens. By using this lens, we will get the parallel beam of light rays. These parallel beam of light rays are travel very long distances. So, these are the parallel beam of light rays. These are traveling like this. These are traveling like this. We want to focus those one on our screen. This is the screen. M and is the screen. You want to focus those one at the position there. That's where you have to take one more lens. This is also converging lens. Due to by using this lens, all the beams reaches our screen at the position P0. That is also called as central maxima or principal maxima. Now we have to take two slits in the propagation direction. This is the first slit that means AB is the first slit and CD is the second slit. AB is the first slit and CD is the second slit. The source of light is emitting the light waves which are having the wavelength lambda, which is a, the wavelength is lambda. The width of the each slit is small a, the width of the each slit is small a, and the separation between the separation between two slits, I am saying here small b. The centers of the two successive slits is called as corresponding points, so centers of the successive slits, centers of the two successive slits is called as corresponding points. Now, when our secondary wave strikes on our slit, automatically they will bend. That means diffraction takes place. The diffracted rays reaches our screen at the position, at the position P1, at the position P1. There, they may be maximum intensity or minimum intensity. To know that whether they are forming their maximum intensity or minimum intensity, we have to calculate the path difference. So here, these are all diffracted rays. These are all making some angle with the principal ray is called as angle of diffraction, that is theta. Okay. Suppose if you observe here on the screen, Actually, in our single slit experiment, only one source, secondary violet is coming directly and also incident on a screen. That's why on that screen, we will observe only the diffraction pattern. But if you come to this concept, it is double slit experiment. In the double slit experiment, on the screen, we can observe not only the diffraction, we can observe the interference pattern also. Why? Why? Because suppose if there is no wave, uh, there is no second slit, directly diffracted rays coming. Okay, in the absence of second one. But if you observe here, so it is a source, from the same source, there are two secondary wavelets are coming. That means these two are two coherent sources. These two are coherent sources. When two coherent sources are, that means two di diffracted rays, secondary wavelets. These are secondary wavelets. Secondary wavelets diffract. These diffracted secondary wavelets are meeting at the position P1. There, 
they will participate in the interference also. That means on our screen, we will observe the combination of the diffraction pattern due to the individual slits and also the interference pattern due to the double slits. Okay. Previously, in our single slit experiment, we have calculated the amplitude value for a single slit. What we got there is amplitude, the resultant amplitude R equals to, there what we got is A sin alpha by alpha, A sin alpha by alpha. There alpha equals to pi A sin theta by lambda, pi A sin theta by lambda. These are the expressions we have derived previous. Okay, pi A sin theta by lambda. Okay, so here A is the width of this slit and lambda is the wavelength of the source of the light and theta is the angle of diffraction. Okay, on the screen, we are observing the diffraction pattern for this, for this regarding this amplitude. Next, on the screen, we are observing the interference pattern also. So, interference pattern also means there are two amplitudes are participating in the interference. Okay, they are having same amplitude. The amplitude is same. A sin, R, A sin alpha by alpha. Now, by using our cosine formula and also the vector addition method, we have to calculate the intensity due to the secondary wavelengths, diffracted, diffracted secondary wavelengths on the screen. Okay. Now, we have to first calculate the path difference. For calculate the path difference, okay, we have to draw the normal. So, this is the normal. This is the normal. This is diffracted ray, this is diffracted ray. I am going to be calculated the path difference between these two. So that means this is, this is, I am saying here E, position E. That means CE is the path difference. CE is the path difference. Okay. This is also angle theta. Okay. Now the path difference is, path difference equals to, what is the path difference there? path difference between those two diffractor rays, these two diffractor rays is, which is equals to CA, which is equals to CA. Okay, how we can calculate the CA value? By using our trigonometric formula. So, what we want here? This, this one. Is this opposite one or not? Yes. Do we know the hypotenuse or not? Yes. So, that means from triangle, from triangle CAE, from triangle CAE, sin theta equals to sin theta equals to opposite that means ca by hypotenuse that is ac that equals to ce we don't know okay ac ac means how we can write is ab plus bc ab plus bc that equals to ce by ab which is equal to the width of the slit that means ca plus BC which is equals to the separation between the slits that means A plus B therefore path difference therefore path difference equals to CE CE equals to if we do the cross multiplication A plus B into sin theta A plus B into sin theta this is the path difference we want to calculate the resultant amplitude. Why? Because from the amplitude only we will get the intensity i equals to a square regarding i equals to r square r. Okay. Regarding that one, this is the path difference. Pa relation between the path difference and phase difference is relation between the path difference and phase difference is okay. This, this one we should be remember that's why here I am writing here. So R equals to A sin alpha by alpha. A sin alpha by alpha. Okay. So, in your test books, you may form the diagram this like this only. Okay. So, I have extended that one for our convenience only. Now, phase difference. Phase difference equals to phase difference sigma equals to 
what is the relation between the path difference and phase difference is 2 pi by lambda into 2 pi by lambda into path difference 2 pi by lambda into path difference 2 pi by lambda into path difference that implies sigma equals to 2 pi by lambda into what is the path difference here we got a plus b into a plus b into sin theta a plus b into sin theta here we have to take this one pi by lambda into a plus b into sin theta beta that means 2 beta okay how how 2 beta we wrote here okay here are where beta equals to beta equals to pi into a plus b sin theta by sin theta by lambda pi into a plus b sin theta by lambda okay so therefore the phase difference is sigma equals to 2 pi by lambda into a plus b into sin theta okay now we have to apply the cosine formula for this to amplitude the resultant we will calculate we have to be uh, keep this one in our mind i am going to be rub the total concept okay Okay, there are two vectors O and another vector. It is having the amplitude A sin alpha by alpha and it is also A sin alpha by alpha. This is the resultant vector. This is the resultant vector. This one I am saying here H and this one I am saying as a g and if it is 180 so totally this angle which is equals to the 180 minus sigma okay from cosines from the from cosines for the from the cosines for the what we can write is the resultant is that means oh square equals to O H square equals to O G square equals to O G square plus O G square plus G H square plus 2 O G G H 2 O G G H cos 2 O G G H cos this one is minus 180 minus theta theta 180 minus theta it minus sigma okay that implies that implies r oh which is equals to r square og square og which is equals to the a sin alpha by alpha whole square plus gh gh is also a sin alpha by alpha square minus 2 minus 2 into minus 2 into OZ, OZ, A sin alpha by alpha, GH, A sin alpha by alpha, I am taking as a common, A sin alpha by alpha, whole square, whole square, cos 180 minus theta, that is equals to minus cos theta, so, we can write, cos, okay, cos, so, that implies, that implies, R square equals to, here a by sin alpha whole square, here a sin, by, a sin alpha by alpha whole square, here also a sin alpha by alpha square, 2 a sin alpha by alpha square, 2 a sin alpha by alpha square, plus 2 a sin alpha by alpha square, alpha square cos, okay, from this two, from this one, we can take it as a common, r square equals to, 2 into a sin alpha by alpha whole square whole square if we take in that one as a comma 1 plus 1 plus 2 into something okay so here what we have is 1 plus cos sigma okay 1 plus cos theta equals to 2 cos square theta by 2 by using that formula we can write r square equals to 2 into a sin alpha by alpha whole square 
into 2 cos square cos square by by 2 so 2 into 2 4 4 intensity i equals to square of the amplitude i equals to r square that equals to 2 into 2 4 is sin alpha by sin alpha by alpha whole square cos square cos square sigma by 2 that means beta by 2 beta by 2 okay from this equation this term indicates that the intensity is due to the diffraction of individual state this term indicates that the intensity due to the interference pattern due to diffracted secondary wavelengths this is the calculation okay now we have to calculate the intensity distribution okay how intensity is distribution based on the conditions that means maximum condition minimum condition here we will get five conditions what are the five conditions the first condition is the first condition is diffraction maximum condition that is theta equals to zero why because when theta equals to zero the rays directly coming and also reaches our screen at the center we can get the principal maximum then minima we can observe due to the diffraction then secondary maximum we can observe that means in the diffraction we will observe at the center for example if we see yeah, so directly we can observe the maximum intensity. This is called central maxima or principal maxima. So from that the intensity will be decreases like this. These are called as secondary maxima. This is called as minima. This is called as minima or minimum. Minimum intensity. Okay, this is third. Okay, like that. Okay, we will calculate that intensity distribution uh, by using this formulas that means path references conditions okay please do subscribe my channel thank you